Welcome beloved, this is Divine Revelations Nigeria YouTube channel, a channel dedicated to the ministration of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose sole purpose is to create the world's largest archive of Jesus' testimonies with the vision is to save souls, build community, and set people free, through the testimony of Jesus. But before we begin today's testimonies, I want to ask you to subscribe to this channel, like and activate the notification bell to receive updates on new videos. By doing so, you will help our ministry reach more people. It is also important to share this video on WhatsApp and Facebook, as it can save lives, as many people may need help, and you will be used tremendously by God in their lives. Amen. So let's get started. A Visit to Hell by Aaron Persa. Preface. In the early morning hours of Wednesday, June 26, 2013, I was given a vision I believe was from God. The following is the exact transcript of the vision and I have done all I can to write down every detail exactly as I saw it. Thus begins my journey. I found myself in a green field with four others around me. There was a clearing in the field and the trees were all around off in the distance. As we circled around, the ground opened up in front of us in a black circle. I could not see the bottom of the hole and was frightened by this. I recognized one of the four people as Jesus, but I could not make out any of the other faces. Jesus said, I am going to send you into the hole, and I pleaded, oh, no Lord I don't want to go down there. Before I could say anything more I was descending into the hole and was moving very quickly. When I landed, I was shocked that my legs had held up to the fall and by all accounts, I was fine with no broken bones. I quickly realized I had fallen into hell. I landed in a pit that was about 30 feet down. The walls were black and there was a fiery liquid pool about the size of a backyard swimming pool. Around the pool was about five feet or so of more black ground. I call it ground as it was not dirt but was squishy and seemed to be filled with bugs, beetles, and such. There is no light in hell. There was only the light from the fire and the reflections of the fire in the smoke. I looked around and saw the bodies of humans lying on the ground. All of them were at various states of decomposition, none were moving, none were speaking, and none appeared to be breathing. As I looked around at these bodies, a creature from the other side of the pool saw me up and moving around and very quickly ran towards me around the pool. I could at first only see the outline in the darkness, but when he got to me I could clearly see his skin was red and he had enormous muscles. His jaw was large and full of sharp teeth. He carried a glowing red pitchfork which was about 9 feet tall and he himself was about 10 to 12 feet tall. As he approached I froze. I could not run or move in time and he speared me right in the chest below my ribs with the pitchfork. The pitchfork was still hot from the last soul he drowned. I felt the intense heat from the middle spike of the fork pierce my heart and the outer two spikes felt like they burst my lungs and I could not breathe. I must not have weighed a thing to him as he lifted me high into the air easily and slammed me face up into the fire pool so my back hit first, he pushed me all the way under and I was submerged about five feet or more down under the liquid and he held me there, and he held me there. I was very surprised that the liquid was so viscous. The consistency was like that of water but had the appearance of thick lava. It was extremely hot and I knew I was in big trouble now. Horrified, I watched as my arms flailed in front of me catching fire and there were reds, oranges, and blues coming off my burning flesh. I saw my feet burn off and the muscles and tendons in my arms and legs were strung out and burning like spaghetti. I saw my lips float off in front of me and my ears and nose did the same. I was at a point where my eyes were going into blackness too when I was flung out of the pool by the creature, and tossed to the side where the other bodies were. As I lay on the bank of the fire pool, I could hear the roaring laughter of the beasts and then I knew there were many of them, perhaps legions of them. There were no human voices at all, no one there speaks, ever. Even a grunt or groan is seen as a human comfort to the dark side in this putrid place. If such is heard, the creatures either pierce the lungs again with the pitchfork and move on, or go ahead and dunk you again. When I was there on the bank of the fire pool, I could feel the vile flesh-eating beetles, snakes, scorpions, bugs, and any other creeping crawling thing found on earth feeding on my carcass. I looked down and could see a coral snake moving through my ribcage and to my forearm and another slithering between my bones. I looked at the persons next to me and their faces had been burned unrecognizable. Although they were in their body somewhere, they were gone and I could tell they had been here for a very long time. I looked deep into their soul's eyes and was terrified at the look in them as it was hollow and expressed utter hopelessness, desolation an abysmal abandonment from God. 
There really is no way to describe them other than picture the worst down and out living soul you can think of on earth, even the worst of the worst, the most drug addicted, homeless, destitute person's eyes you can imagine and then multiply it by 100 and you may get close. There is no hope left once you are in hell, ever. I also noticed that we were all not laying there decomposing, but rather we were regenerating as our bodies needed a little time to regenerate so the next time, we would feel the same amount of pain or more. As I regenerated, I watched as the other humans who regenerated before me were picked up one by one by the creature with the pitchfork and were slammed into the pool. Each time someone is slammed into the pool the creatures laugh. They laugh harder every time someone is thrown in and they experience more pain. The better the job they do the louder they laugh. The creatures never get tired, they never take a break, they never sleep, they never eat, they just continue this routine forever to please their master Satan and hope their laughter will be heard by Satan and that it will please him. When they are finished with pushing the souls under, they pull them back out and lay them down on the ground. Then the limbs and heads fall off the soul's body, and the fire water pours out of their throats and chest cavities where their hearts had been. The fire water spills out of the bodies all over the banks and sometimes pours down onto the other souls laying there regenerating. Now it had come to be my turn again, and instead of standing up like when I arrived, I was laying down on the side where I had been tossed. No one gets back up after this. They all lay there in pain and being eaten until they regenerate. Then the creature came back to me. He didn't say a word and just thrust the pitchfork into my chest again and lifted me up. I could hear my lungs sizzle and could not take a breath. This time he spun me over so I would enter head first. He slammed me into the pool and the same occurred as I saw the burning of my arms, hands, legs, and feet in reds, oranges, and blues. I flailed around trying to get the fire to stop or to somehow save myself to no avail. No matter how hard I tried I just kept burning. There was no escape and no way back up to the surface until the creature pulls you out of the fiery water. I eventually stopped flailing. I was so burned, decomposed, and was pulled out of the fire pool and tossed aside to be eaten by the flesh-eating bugs again and to regenerate again. I also noticed as you regenerate you feel everything, all the bites, the venoms, and poisons, the lava dripping on you, the diseases filling your body from the contaminated ground, everything. This whole process takes only about 10 minutes to complete. So the people there are experiencing this about 6 times an hour for eternity. Upon gathering my senses back, I knew I had to act quickly once I regenerated and try to get out of here. Somehow God allowed me to regenerate fast and I snuck over to the wall and began to climb the wall. The wall was squishy and filled with flesh-eating bugs, spiders, disease, detritus, and every other such vile thing. It was not like dirt at all but more like a wall of living insects all tied together. There was no slime or guts of the bugs they were like living hollow shells, as I grabbed handfuls to climb there was nothing cool to the touch here, anywhere. When the wall was disturbed it made a collaborative sound of screeching and of bugs clicking together. I was terrified the creature would hear it and rip me from the wall. My hands went into the wall about to my elbow and the same with my feet to my knees. I just frantically grabbed and pulled each handful and stepped up until I reached the top. At the top, I looked around and saw the pit where I had been was next to another one just like it, and another, and on and on it went like this as far as I could see in every direction. Each pit was separated by about three feet of the same type of living ground which was now pulling me back down. I saw there were thousands of pits just like this, perhaps hundreds of thousands. There could have been millions of people in these pits in every direction I turned. There were no screams of humans like I had expected, just the roaring laughter of the creatures. When one would laugh, others would join in as a congratulatory laugh. It was horribly unnerving to hear these blasphemous sounds. The pits were laid out as a grid, only connected by the three feet ground substance on all four sides. There were multiple volcanoes all with massive rivers of lava coming down them. One was very close to me so I began to run towards it as if I could somehow get out if I just got to the top of the volcano. There is no way out though, and the roof is thick and black from the smoke and the only light is that of the fires, the pits, the rivers and the tops of the volcanoes. It appeared the rivers flowed off into larger pools of fire, but it was so far and so dark it appeared as red lines out on the horizon. As I ran, I noticed a different style of creature was flying around and dropping new arrivals into their assigned pits. These creatures were wire-like and thin, their wings were pointy like a bat's wings. These creatures' wingspans were between 10 to 20 feet and their bodies were about the size of a human. 
I could not see their faces but like all the other things I saw, I know they are just as hideous. They flew around in circles and around in packs at times. They seemed to go up into the smoke to gather new souls and would come back and drop them in the pits. It was as if they were catching the souls as they were being dropped down. These two made hideous sounds as they dropped their souls into the pits. I paid them no mind and focused intensely on reaching the volcano. I ran as fast and hard as I could. When I reached the base of the volcano, I was surprised at the density of the volcano as it was hard, unlike the grounds leading up to it. It was made of rock or likely basalt. The walls of the volcano were jagged, sharp, and hot. I quickly began to ascend the wall. As I got higher up I could see the fire pool pits numbered far greater than I could originally see. I ascended higher towards the top, and I looked around again. Now I could see into the rivers of fire and could see there were many people in the rivers too. Scared, I began to ascend more quickly. Somehow I was detected, and from the corner of my left eye, I could see a large fireball and plume of smoke coming up from below me circling the volcano counterclockwise. When it came around the last corner it was directly in front of me and there was a large angry face in the plume. The face could have been the size of half a football field. Through the fire and the smoke I could clearly see it was a large flying creature and it yelled at me, don't you know who I am? I did not speak back not out of fear but rather out of disdain. Although the voice was loud it did not scare me or alarm me. I did not know who the creature was though. I looked away and tried to climb up some more and was instantly knocked with great force off the wall. I fell backward and down and down until I hit the river of fire and was instantly burning alive. The river was of thicker viscosity than the pits from before, and I was flailing to get out, but the river pulls you in and again it is much thicker so it is much harder to move. I was burning up and went under the river, my skin, eyes, guts, and every other part were burning and flowing around in front of me. I surfaced and instantly regenerated, and then the pain started over again. In the river, you regenerate much quicker as once you surface you are still in the river so you are kept in as much pain as possible. The river holds many souls far more than in the pits where I had been. As I looked around I could see other souls trying to do the breaststroke. When they would do one stroke, they would then flail around and die. Then when they came up for air they would be a skull and some face and throat. The lava would pour out of their eyes, throat, and chest like a pitcher being poured out. By the time they hit the river again, they would be whole, only to repeat this process every 30 seconds or so. This part of hell is far worse, though it is all bad, in part because it is so painful and also because it happens so often there is just no way out of the river once you're there. There are thousands upon hundreds of thousands of people in each river, possibly more, but it is very crowded. As we neared the bottom of the volcano, the river begins to level out and the flow becomes slower. At the base of the volcano, there are more of the pit-type creatures with their pitchforks. They were pushing people under who had come up for air. I watched them as they would push people under and their pitchforks would shake violently for a few seconds and then stop. When they stopped, the creature would belt out the hideous low growling laughter to his master and then fork another one under. Over and over this went all down the river. I was pushed under a few times and saw below the surface. The legs and bodies of the other souls in the river were thin, deteriorated, and burning with the oranges, reds, and blues of the flesh and muscles burning, their guts were just trails of burning strings and were all around them. The people were not swimming through the river as much as they were just floating and trying to avoid being pushed under. Everyone in the river is weak, and again the pain is so much or they've been there so long that most can't or won't even flail around anymore. No one speaks, grunts, screams, or makes any sound, the only sounds in the river are bubbling, boiling, splashing, and the sounds of the creatures bellowing laughter. After some time the river became narrower, perhaps even deeper and began to meander back and forth to the left and right. At this point, the river was faster and the pit-style creatures were gone, but I could see another type of creature ahead on the river banks. These creatures were very tall in comparison to the others and were very thin. They were about twice the size of the others at about 20 feet tall. They were raspy and cackled when they laughed, they had grey skin and blue fire surrounded them as if they glowed. They had what appeared to be baseball bats or clubs with one spiked side, the bats were about 10 to 12 feet long. The people in front of me I could see were being hit each in the head by the creatures then they would sink under the river only to surface again, and quickly regenerate. This was the only time I heard any advisory voice and it told me twice to stay in the middle. 
I quickly moved towards the middle of the river and could see the new line of creatures hitting the souls around me in the head. Their heads would crack open like melons, some would be hit by the curved side and others were hit by the spiked side which went through both sides of their heads. I could tell they could feel the full pain of each impact and again knew they felt the pain going under all the way to regeneration. These beasts kept the same cackling laughter up as did the ones before them. Like the creatures before them, they needed no rest, no food, no sleep, and never took a break. They had only one purpose in existence, to make those fallen souls feel pain, forever. I was thankful that I passed through this zone without being hit. The eyes of those souls in this portion of the river were the same as the other parts completely desolate, bleak, and abandoned from all things good. The souls in the river had the most hollow, distraught, hopeless eyes as that seemed to say they knew they were here forever. We had finally left the tall creature section and the river became wider and there were many more souls in this portion. Many were trying to do the breaststroke again and would come up and fling the lava around with their heads as they came up to regenerate. For some, the lava poured out of their eyes, noses, and mouths, and others would try to rise up and it would come out of their midsection leaving a glowing red empty carcass. These would just fall back into regenerate. The river went on like this for a while and was thick and slow. We came to a bend in the river and I saw what looked to be an opening to my left. I made my way to the opening which was a collection of rocks in a circle formed like a window. Outside the window, I could see we were high up in a cave on a mountain looking out, and I saw blue skies and green trees below. I reached out to touch the window and when I did, the window disappeared it was back to the blackened wall only illuminated by the river's glow. I was then pulled from the river and found myself back at the start of the river at the base of the volcano. I was so deeply saddened by this, it was as if part of my own soul had been left behind. I was scared now, that I may not be able to get out. I went the entire course of the river again and felt all the pain over and over again as I tried to swim or exit. I went through the 10-foot tall red creatures and was pushed under many times. I went through the 20-foot tall burning blue type creatures and stayed in the middle and was not hit. We got to the point in the river where it slowed way down and I believe we were getting close to the large pool, which now seemed more like a blackened fire ocean than a pool. At this point, I could not take any more as I had been burned up and drowned in rivers of fire for too long. I had been yelled at by a demon and watched people falling from the sky into fire pits while flying creatures snatched them up in midair. I had seen the creature torturing souls in the river and others cracking heads open. I pleaded to God, God, please get me out of here, I don't want to be here anymore, and please God get me out of here. In an instant, I was out of the darkness and out of the fire river and there was dimmed sunlight. My eyes needed to adjust, but I was on solid ground and I tried to look around and saw Jesus was with me. Jesus was holding my right elbow and was helping to hold me up. With my left hand, I covered my eyes to shield them from the wind and light. I could feel hot wind all around me and there was black smoke all around. There were no birds, no cars, no horns, no sirens, no telephone poles, no street signs, and no sound at all but the wind. I looked and saw there were no buildings anywhere and nothing was over three feet high. Not a single stone was atop another, there were no trees not even burned down ones, there was nothing but blackened earth, wind, and black smoke. I asked Jesus, was the face I saw in hell, Satan, and he said, no, Satan is on the earth. I looked some more around and was astonished there was so much nothingness and every single thing had been completely pulverized to dust and ash. I mean even the World Trade Center left a debris pile after September 11, 2001, but here there was nothing over three feet high and any object was very small and unrecognizable. I asked Jesus, where are we? He said, this is New York City. I began to tremble and was more afraid than before. I said to Jesus, oh Lord, I don't want to be here, please take me out of here. In an instant, we had moved and Jesus said to me, how about here? I looked around and the scenery was exactly the same no buildings, no cars, no birds, no dogs barking, no background noise of any kind only wind, except the smoke was a dirty brown color. I asked him, where are we now? He said, this is Los Angeles. I said, oh no Lord, not here too. I don't want to be here. Now we were moving much quicker and we were in another desolate destroyed and silent city with a cloud of light grey smoke. The Lord asked me, how about here? I asked him, where is this? Jesus said, this is Atlanta. I told him. 
Oh no lord, I don't want to be here. We had moved again in an instant, the same thing destroyed everything, not a sound, nothing over three feet tall and the only things that were even three feet tall were because items had piled on top of one another. This place had a darker grey smoke everywhere in the wind. Jesus said to me again, how about here? I asked, where are we? Jesus replied, this is Chicago. I told him, oh no, Lord, I don't want to be here. We moved a final time, and again everything was gone and the quiet was overpowering the wind, only this time the smoke and wind were a dark bluish grey and it was wet. Jesus said, how about here? I asked him, where are we? Jesus said, this is Florida. I then asked him, why is all of the smoke different? He said, it is like the sand you bring back from the beach. I then asked him, why are you showing this to me? He replied, it is because you have been chosen to tell the world, the end is nigh. I did not understand this and asked him, you mean you're coming back at night? He said, no, that the end is nigh. I asked one final question, why is all of this happening? This time a voice of a thousand thunders came from the sky and all around me into my ears, spine, and soul and said, we have decided it so, and I was scared. My shoulders went up and touched my ears like a child in a thunderstorm. The sound of this voice was so loud and it brought fear into every inch of my being. It could only have been the voice of God. This was the only time I was terrified by any of the voices. This voice was so much louder and powerful than that of the smoke plume demon in hell which was loud. God's voice brought every ounce of fear out of me and I did not respond after I heard this. It was so resolute that I did not dare talk back to it nor ask another question. At this point when the echo of the voice had ended, we moved again very quickly and were back in the field where it all began. Again I was with the four, and the hole to hell had closed. I looked up and the four turned and began to walk towards the tree line, and I was all alone again in the field. I then awoke from the vision and saw it was around 3.27 in the morning. Conclusion I was blown away by what I had just seen, and knew I had to follow the instructions given to me and write this all down. I know many who read this will not believe even a portion of it, but I also know God works through people far more than many realize and though you may not believe, I hope God will open your eyes or someone you know through this. This is not so much for the saved, but more for those who do not know if God, Jesus, heaven, and hell are even real. I believe they are, and though many will be blind to the Lord, some will believe or pass it on. I know Christianity is split into so many groups that to a new believer or even potential believer it may seem overwhelming. My advice is to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who came to earth was crucified and rose from the grave. Start here, with just a small amount of faith, and the other things will come. You won't change overnight and you will likely still sin, but your soul will be saved so when your time comes you won't be pulled down into hell. I didn't understand why God would choose to show me these things until I talked with my father. He said no one would think David could beat Goliath either. God knows what your heart's true intention is and he wants to be a part of every person's life. Please also understand he does not want anyone to go to hell but has given us the choice to decide on our own. After being down there I could see how awful and separated from God it is. The pain and grief are far too great for one to write down and I too don't want anyone to go there. If anyone truly knew how bad hell really is they wouldn't want anything to do with the place. To me, it's an easy reminder that no matter how bad it gets here on earth it could be much worse. I further believe God withheld much of the pain and the smells of this rancid place from me, and if I had experienced it all I would have died right there where I laid. Many of you will only ask about the second part of the vision showing future events. I cannot really say much more than what I saw. I don't know what happened to the four cities and the one entire state. I can only speculate it was something with a lot of power and heat. I wasn't given any time frame for the events to occur. I would like to think they won't happen in my lifetime or my kid's lifetime, but it seemed very close in the vision. It seemed so close, that I immediately went online to see if bad news had broken overnight. As far as the smoke portion goes, and the reference to the beach by Jesus goes, I have visited various beaches of the Atlantic coast many times to this point in my life. I always take a small sand sample with me to bring home and compare it to the other sand samples from other beaches I've collected over the years. I believe the differences in the smoke represented the differences in the ground below the cities. I don't know what happened to the cities other than they were gone, absolutely decimated beyond anything the world has ever seen to this point. In conclusion, I trust God and Jesus are real. 
when my time does come I don't want anyone to be sad. I have seen hell, hell on earth, and I now lack only the sight of heaven and only wish to see it when my time here is done. I know many who read this will think it is not real, but some will and will take heed and will begin to prepare their soul. They may either dedicate or rededicate his her life to the Lord because of it, and then it will all be worth it, as you can fear death no more. I know many, many people, whose bodies are in the cemetery, and I look forward to seeing them in heaven. I hope to see you all as well on the other side, in heaven, I know without a doubt I will be there. Good luck to you all in your walk through life, there are many snares set to trap you, so be vigilant and rest your hopes and fears on the Lord. Your burden will be so much lighter, and you will be more content with the decisions you have made up to this point. Thank you for taking the time to read my story. I welcome any and all feedback, as well as stories or testimonies of your own. Aaron Purser